I'm going to use two. <laughs> How's that? Is that any better? Should I take it from the top or are we all good? Good morning. How are you? No. Pray for the Uganda team, please. That would be great. Um, another reminder that the service pattern has changed. So this week there's no, what, Crabtree? Next week there's no 7 o'clock service. If you're confused, it's all on the notice board at the back, and it's all on church suite. Um, what else? The church electoral roll. If you want to vote at the APCM, or you want to see your name on a piece of paper at the back of church, you need to be on the electoral roll. Well, it's open, um, and the deadline for adding your name is today. No one's making a fast move, so it's not that urgent. But it's at the back if you need to do it. Or if you're confused, come and ask someone. Um, on Wednesday, the 21st, in church at 8 o'clock, uh, we've got your space again, which is an hour of meditation and mindfulness and stillness. If you don't know what it is, come and talk to one of us. Or be better, yeah, it's speak to Vicky, because she's the expert, and she's leading it. Uh, and then on Friday this week, we've got Memory Lane Cafe, which is 11 o'clock in the church hall. A um, place to share memories and stories, and talk to Dave Emmett if you've got questions. Dave, give us a wave. Hello. It feels like we're a collecting ground for clergy that don't belong here today, aren't we? <laughs> We've got a few kicking around. Hi. <laughs> right, we're um, we're a bit back and forth today. We've got uh, if you're not re if you're not here regular, uh, we haven't got a vicar at the minute, but we are looking forward to welcoming Elliot and his wife Joe and their family. And as soon as we've got news about when they're coming we'll let you know. Um, but for now, you're stuck with folks that normally sit down there but are standing up here for the time being. So you've got me today, and Mark's going to come and share, uh, share the word with us later on. Um, shall we stand together? We're going to open with a prayer and then some worship, and then I'll lead us through the service. Father God, I thank you that you're here with us. I thank you that you were here before we arrived, and you'll be with us when we go home today. We pray uh, that we'll go home changed as a result of having been here today with you and with each other. Our hearts and our minds are wide open to your Holy Spirit today. Amen.
God Almighty, through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior, I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three. In one, I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Our church and our defense.
Should we take our seats? Sorry, this is what happens when you ask uh, the worship team to lead the service. You just get loads of songs, so. I'm not even sorry. <laughs> um, Sandra, do you want to come up and lead us in our reading? Is that okay? Thank you. You might want to get a paper copy out, but it's up on the screen if not. morning's reading is taken from Luke 4, sorry, Luke 5, get the chapter right, sorry, uh, Luke 5, and we're going to begin to read at verse 17. So, uh, it, as Pete said, it will be on the screen. If you wish to follow us in the Pew Bible, it's on page 1032. So, chapter 5 of Luke, beginning to read at 17. One day, as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village in Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and they lowered him on his mat through the tiles 
into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of him, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed, and they gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Mark's going to come and uh, share God's word with us. This is not Mark's full-time job. He normally runs a coach company, which he prays about every day. So we should definitely pray for him doing this, which is not what he does every day. Um, Father, thank you for Mark and the words that you've uh, helped him prepare to share with everyone today. I pray that you make our hearts receptive to those words and uh, you know, just fill him with your boldness and confidence now. Amen. Glasses on first. Well, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to worship together this morning. For anyone who doesn't know me, I, I'm Mark Aspinall. I do run a small coach company around here, and I'm a regular member of the congregation here at 11 o'clock. This morning, we're looking at the man on the mat, the man that we heard of in our Bible reading. I remember being taught about this gospel story when we were at Sunday school as kids at Holmeswood Methodist Chapel, and that's quite a long time ago, Duncan, isn't it? And like many Bible stories, we're very familiar with the story, but we often miss some of the deeper meaning, perhaps because we almost know the story too well. So I've really enjoyed studying this reading and preparing the sermon and considering in greater detail what we can learn from the passage. Our reading starts by explaining that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were watching Jesus. I would say they were following him but it wouldn't be true for the majority of them because even though they may have traveled for many days to be in his presence, they were there to find fault with this upstart of a preacher as his growing popularity was sure at some stage to bring him into conflict with the religious classes. They were there to hear him trip up. They wanted to find fault. They wanted to get something on him that they could use against him later. Jesus knows this, but it doesn't change a thing that he plans to do in his ministry. Even though he knows ultimately it will be these very same religious classes that will bring about his death. And the next thing that we hear in our passage, after confirming the presence of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, is a wonderful one-line statement of fact. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Do you see how clearly Luke is outlining all the facts? Two sentences. The religious people were there and Jesus is ready and able to heal. And the very next line introduces the four friends. They're arriving with the man on the mat. These four men are determined to bring the crippled man to Jesus. They're certain that Jesus can solve their friend's problem. I don't know if they've seen Jesus heal before or whether they've just heard from someone else about this wonderful man with the power to heal. But something must have given them the faith, the deep down belief that if only Jesus could touch their crippled friend, if only they could speak with him, something miraculous would happen. But when they get there, the house is packed. 
There were so many people trying to see Jesus, there just wasn't a chance for the five of them to get inside. So undeterred, they go onto the roof of the house and they take away the tiles and they break through the wattle and door construction of the ceiling just so they can lower their crippled friend from the roof so that he can be front and center before Jesus. I don't know how they must have felt. They've gone to so much effort. But instead of healing the crippled man, initially Jesus says, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Jews used to believe that infirmity or illness could be brought about by the sins of the individual or their forefathers over many generations. But I'm not sure that Jesus was linking the cripple's infirmity to his sins. I think Jesus saw further than that. He knows he can heal the cripple. That's simple for the son of man. But when he encounters the crippled man, Jesus can see that his greatest need isn't to walk. It's to be put right with God. Jesus knows you can go to heaven with a broken leg or while you're waiting for a hip operation. But you can't go to heaven if your relationship with God is broken. And Jesus sees the need for the man to be reconciled with God is far more important than being physically healed, even if it wasn't what the four friends had planned. But his work is interrupted by the ill will of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Jesus knows what they are thinking. He can sense their outrage. Their outrage that a human being has spoken words of forgiveness to another human being. Only God has the power to forgive sins. And any human being offering forgiveness was a blasphemer and should be put to death. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, immediately challenges their hypocrisy. Because he knows it should have been the Pharisees and the teachers of the law that brought people closer to God. But instead, they weighed the people down with religious laws and practices that did the exact opposite. And they held people back in their search for God. And Jesus just can't stand anything coming between his Father in heaven and his favorite creation. Mankind, you and me. The whole reason he came to earth, lived and died and rose again, was to do away with all the centuries of disobedience and distance from God. To put us back in a relationship with God our Father, God our Creator. So Jesus confronts them with their thoughts. And says, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. You see, Jesus takes this opportunity not only to challenge them as hypocrites, but to make a clear statement to them of who he is. I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus calls himself the Son of Man. It's a phrase that he uses to describe himself 80 times in the Gospels. It's a phrase most likely referencing Daniel's vision recorded in Daniel chapter 7. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Jesus was saying clearly to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, I am the one. I am the Messiah. I am the son of man that you've all been waiting for. And this son of man has all authority and sovereign power. 
He has the power to forgive sins on earth. And he has the power to heal. And to prove he has all power and authority. He says to the cripple, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. And that's just what he did. He got up, he rolled up his mat and he walked right out of there praising God as he went. Can you imagine the awestruck silence? Can you imagine what everyone was thinking? Can you imagine the pride and relief of the cripple's friends? Can you imagine the confusion of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law? One minute they were accusing Jesus of blasphemy and the next he's giving them proof that he was the long-awaited Messiah. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. So what should we take from this passage? I have to say I've got three conclusions. Firstly, do you need to be a friend who will carry someone to Jesus? The four friends had faith that Jesus had everything the cripple needed. Do we share their faith and commitment to make a difference? Who is the crippled friend who needs your help? It doesn't need to be a physical ailment. Jesus wasn't worried about the cripple's physical condition. He was worried that he needed to be put right with God. Who is the person that you are meant to carry into the presence of Jesus? Secondly, and I'm going to be a little self-critical here. As a church, we mustn't get wrapped up in the trappings and traditions of religion. Like the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they thought they were in charge of the God thing and it couldn't have been further from the truth. We need to rip out of our church and our fellowships any traditions or pride or practices that create barriers. Anything that holds this church back from our mission to speak Jesus to the crippled people of Bursco and beyond. If the most important thing to us is knowing, growing in, and sharing Jesus' love in verse going beyond, what needs to change? What are the barriers around our church that stop the people who need him most coming into the presence of Jesus? Because unlike the four friends in our modern society, people are not that eager to come into the presence of God. Perhaps we need to reach out and take the presence of God to them not wait for them to come in. So for me, more Narnia, more Surf Stage, more Uganda, more of all the activities that we advertise in the St. John's Journal. As a church, we've said we want to be fit for mission. And whatever that means in the background, I can promise you, in the front of the shop, it means more outreach, more witnessing, more acts of service. At the last PCC meeting, we were discussing how do we as a group do less finance, less estates update, less administration. Instead, let's find a way, let's commit ourselves to more mission, more outreach and more service. Can you imagine what a difference that will make in our church if we can just make that change? And lastly, Jesus made a very clear statement before the crowd and the religious leaders who were there at the time. I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He isn't leaving them in any doubt about who he is. He is the man. He is the Messiah, that mysterious one like a son of man from Daniel, who's given authority, glory, and sovereign power. And that same Jesus Christ is here today for us. Through his sacrifice on the cross, he can forgive our sins and put us right with God, just as he did for the man on the mat. That same Jesus Christ, the the Son of Man, also has the power to heal in our time and our generation, just as he did for the man on the mat. Can I ask, do you know him? Do you believe he has the power to heal 
and to bring us closer to God. If you don't know Jesus, but you want to start that journey to know him more, grab me afterwards, or Pete, or any of the wardens, or any of the worship band. We are a church that believes in Jesus Christ, his death and his resurrection. We're a church that wants to share this good news with the people that we meet. My prayer for each and every one of us today is that we may know this Son of Man for ourselves in all his risen authority, glory, and sovereign power. And that we can share this Son of Man, God's most wonderful gift to mankind, with our friends and our family, and whoever is our man on the mat. Amen. Mark, well, thank you. That was fab. Love that little bit. I think I might be losing. I love that bit at the end, Mark. We're a, we're a church that loves Jesus and we're a church that wants the world to know that Jesus loves them too, right? It was amazing. Um, we're going to respond just with a time of worship and then we're going to go into some, uh, some prayer together. So if the band can come up. Um, like this next song we're singing just gets right at the heart of who Jesus is and what he's done, right? That story is just one tiny little snip, and this song is trying to take a really long view about who, who Jesus is. Um, maybe just while we're singing it, just try and grab onto that bit of Jesus that jumps out at you from that story. Like, is it the bit where he's forgiven people's sins or where he's, um, where he's saying to the naysayers, I'm better than this. You know, here's, here's your proof, off you go. Um, or healing people, or whatever, whatever it is, just try and catch on to that little piece as we're singing. And then we're going to pick up on it when we pray together after. Okay. Should we stand? was 
Okay, should we take our seats? Amen, Adam. Thank you. Um, so we're going to have a time of open prayer now. Um, we do it loads when we do other service, but we hardly ever do it on a morning. And since we haven't got anyone to pray, I thought it might be a nice idea. Anyway, I've got a big long list of things that I'd thought of, and I'm sure you guys have got loads as well. So if you're struggling for what you might like to come up and share with us, I was thinking, well, we've got the Uganda team. There's all the mess in Israel and Gaza and the Ukraine. We could pray for our kids' work or our staff team or Elliot and Joe are going to be coming to join us really soon, we hope. Um, and loads of other things. But the really important thing to remember is when we're doing intercessions in church, we're standing here on behalf of people that aren't necessarily praying these things today. So I'm not saying, God help me. I've done that this morning. Yeah, I've had some time with God and done those things. When we're doing intercessions, you're saying, God help us or God help those people. And it's really helpful if you think about circles, right? So if you've got a little circle, who are the people that you're close to that you want to pray with? And then the bigger circle might be like our church or the people you... And then the big circle is what's going on in the country, what's going on in the world. That we, yeah? And we think God's got the same influence on all of those things. So we're going to have a little bit of time of prayer. If you want to come and pray, come and jump on the lectern and Tom will turn it on. Um, and we'll just see what God wants us to pray for. Is that okay? I'll kick us off while someone else is brave and stands up and starts to come forwards. Um, don't feel like you've got to wait for the previous one to finish. Just come and come and queue up. That's fine. Uh, Father God, I thank you for our team who are out in Uganda uh, this week gone and this week still to come. I thank you that you are keeping them safe and you're with them every step of the journey. I thank you that the work they're doing is having an impact on the lives of the people in Uganda and their own lives as a team, but our lives as a church as well. You're raising the faith level of all those people. Just pray your protection over them for the rest of their journey. And a safe travel home later this week. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you are looking after our church. We thank you that you've um, given us a gift of Joe, Elliot, and the whole family. We thank you, Lord, for just the journey of seeking that right person. And we thank you that he is the one. And Lord, we thank you today for all the people that are in the church, previous vicars, vicars to be. And it just really says that you've got your hand on this church and you're not going to let it go. And we just thank you for that, Lord. And take us forward and may we all be ready to receive this next piece of the jigsaw as this church moves forward into the community and beyond. Amen. Lord, as we were just um, praying before the service, I felt a presence of our Lord on my shoulders. And I just want to thank you for this presence and the fact that for each person here, that there is a presence as you go forward outside of this church and a reassurance that if you want to speak to anybody that there is a presence of our Lord with a hand reassurance, hand of reassurance on your shoulder saying, well done, faithful servant. Amen. Yeah, dear God, thank you for all the, uh, the volunteers, the church family here. That the volunteers who work so hard to kind of keep things going so we can meet and we can worship you together, which obviously we can do on our own, but it's nothing like just being together and doing it uh, with one another and seeing our lovely church family together. So we thank you for that big team uh, inspired and strengthened and well, uh, Father. We thank you for Elliot and Joe, and we look forward to them coming too. But God, we just thank you that your gospel, your good news has lost none of its power. Paul didn't just come with words, but a demonstration of your kingdom's power. We thank you that, um, you know, you say freely you receive, freely give. So I just pray, Father God, for those who are sick. Father God, you say blessed are those who are, are poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God, and I pray that people today who are struggling will know that the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. And that we just connect those dots, God, and enter into your kingdom, Father God, and be healed and made well, Father God. Thank you that our sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven. I'm grateful for that. But we just, oh, I don't know how to put it into words, God, but I just want people who are feeling uh, that maybe they're left out, they're not worthy, and they're unwell, to kind of get that you came for them, Lord. 
I don't know how we kind of take it from a prayer to action. But I, I pray that would somehow happen today. Amen. Lord, I just want to pray for the war in Gaza. I pray, Lord, that there may be peace and reconciliation. I pray for the people of Gaza, and I pray for the people of Israel. And we just pray, Lord, for peace. We ask that you would give world leaders wisdom as they seek to find a peaceful way forward. And we also pray for the people of the Ukraine. We ask your blessing upon them, and we pray particularly, Lord, that they can get the promised ammunition from the other Western states so that they can protect their own nation. And we ask your blessing upon them. Amen. Sure, friends, uh, like me, you're horrified at some of the things you see on the television, reading the newspaper about the inequalities of this world. When some people have got wealth of billions of pounds and others are living on a few pence per day. You see it down our streets, and you see it, you read about it in the newspapers, and we see it very often wherever we go. We just pray, Lord, a greater sharing of the world's wealth a greater sharing of the abundance of things that you've given to us to make our lives easier, our food, our medical uh, facilities, everything that we take so much for granted. We just pray, Lord, that there should be a greater level of equality in our country and across the world so that we see now people living on the streets, we hear of people starving, we see queues for food, queues for clothes, queues for shelter of all sorts. But Lord, we just pray that you will put your hand upon some of these people in need and enable them to live better lives, safer lives. And we just leave that to you, Lord, because... While we can try to do something about it, we don't, as individuals, have the power. But we know that you are a God of miracles. And nothing is beyond you, Lord. We just thank you for that. Praise your name. Amen. Amen. Guys, thank you. That was really lovely. Has anyone got a burning desire to come up? And add to that while the young people come in. No. Right, well, all our children and young people are coming down the aisle. Hello, guys and girls and leaders. Thank you. And Tracy's going to come up and tell us what they've been up to. Aren't you, Tracy? Yeah? Come on, then. If you'd run fast, you could have bowled them all over, couldn't you? That'd have been funny. <laughs> do you want this? Would one? I do that? Yeah, go on. Uh, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, we've had um, a lovely week uh, day. Week feels like a week. No, it doesn't. It feels like a day. Uh, we've been talking all about friendship. What makes a good friend? We even did um, a bit of a science experiment where I made curds and whey, which was quite impressive because I hadn't had a practice. So if anybody wants to use my culinary skills to make curds and whey, I don't really know what you do with it once you've made it. But it's there if you want it. So we did that. We've done all about friendship and talked about what being a good friend is. And one thing that we do when we're a good friend is pray. And we've been praying, not during our session, to be honest, but we've been praying regularly every day for our Uganda team because we've got a team of young people that have gone out to Uganda. So we've been praying for them and they've had a really an amazing time. So I'm sure next week um, when we do the service in the morning, they'll come back and they'll tell us some of the great things that God has done and some of the ways that prayer have been 
prayers have been answered, really. Um, yeah, so that's our challenge this week is to be a really good friend. So we'd like to extend that challenge out to all of you so you can think about how you can be a good friend this week um, and how you can help other people. After church, I've not forgotten, they're all looking at me because I said um, we'd do the fruit pal fruit pastel challenge if they were good friends walking across so if anyone wants to join in with the fruit pastel challenge later come and get one you know the advert gotta chew gotta chew gotta chew that's what we're doing you're not allowed to chew it basically <laughs> trace i don't know what's just happened but we loved it <laughs> fab yeah you can clap for the you can clap for these nutters I thought they were better than that, but, you know, you clap as much as you want. Uh, right, we're going to have a song with actions. And have we got someone to... Oh, oh, these two, you guys coming up? Come on. Well, if you thought that last bit was crazy. Come on, boys, let's have it. You guys are going to have to join in as well. It's on your feet, on your feet. I'll make you do it twice if you don't stand up quick. They've just been volunteered at the very last second, so <laughs> give them some support. <laughs>
Amen. Uh, let me pray for us before we go. Father God, I thank you that you are here with us. I thank you that you call us to be a church more than what the buildings are and what goes on just inside here, but a church that looks outwards and takes you with us. So I pray that you fill us now with your Holy Spirit so that when we go out, we'll be leaking your spirit all over our families, all over our workplaces and our schools and our colleges and everywhere we go. Lord, I thank you that we go home different because we were here together with you today. Amen. Amen. Have a good week, guys. Oh, yeah. If you want to get prayer, there'll be people over there. It might not be the people stood there right now who are looking quite scared. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Fab. Thank you, guys.